Color. Uh, roll call again first. Pledge allegiance. Call to order. Okay. Ben Zee's a tuck ditching. Okay. <coughs> so I'm off to you then, Ben. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Now. I've done it. I used to run this movie meeting yet. So, okay. <laughs> Roll call. Mayor Perry. Here. Council President Oliveras. Present. Councilor Hensley. Here. Councilor Lewis. Here. And Councilor Jackman is uh, absent for the moment, but we do have a quorum, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Visitors. Peggy Bishop. Nick Heineck. Timmy Lewis. Okay. And do we have a motion to pay the bills? I think we got to acknowledge JD and. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> JD and the uh, president of the two. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And uh, Alex. I'm here too. Okay. <laughs> I'll count it for then. Okay. <coughs> so now we have the minute, minutes from March 17th, regular yep. session. We got to make a motion to accept pay the, the bills. Pay the bills. Okay, yeah. yeah. I'll make the motion. In one second. I'll second it. In favor? Aye. 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 No, nay, nays? No. Okay. And we've got the minutes. March 17th, 2022, regular session. Yep. I make a motion that we accept the minutes from March 17th, 2022, regular session. We have a second on that. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All nay, A. Okay. Okay, now April 7th, special session. Minutes. I make a motion that we accept April 7th, special session um, minutes. Got a motion on that? All in favor? Aye. 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 Nays? No. Okay. So, now we're down to public comment. This is the time to speak to the City Council or the Mayor on any subject, including what is unlisted is listed on the agenda except for public public hearings. The time limit is three minutes per person. Anyone have anything? Okay. Uh, the only thing I have to say is my my trailer person will should be out by the end of the month. Okay. Okay. Um, Nick, you got something you want to say? Yes, the city of Swordville has an ordinance when they put in the uh, original water system here, an ordinance that prohibits citizens of Soderville from improving or upgrading their uh, water. I have a wife that does the wet, uh, garden. I have two wells on my property. Neither one produces much more than a gallon per minute. I would like a waiver from the city of uh, Soderville to allow me to upgrade and to uh, improve my wells on my property. My property is located in the lower part of the city, well beyond the point where the city of Soderville draws their water from. Is that something we address now, or is that something that I we don't. should do a little later? I, I really know. think we need to know exactly what the most recent and updated <clears throat> ordinance is because you're certainly finding that there this is abolished that that and that wasn't done right and so I would just want to make sure we're I'm not, not sure. saying that you aren't on the, yeah. the most but boy have we found some interesting or he found some interesting things. <clears throat> oh, I believe it. <laughs> yeah. I and believe I'm, it. And I, I'm, going, I'm still wondering if that was even legal for the city to do good. that. Where we have it, you can put wells in. That's a good question. So I think, we ought to, I think the city needs to check into that for you and see if it is even legal for the city to limit repairing wells and stuff in the city limits. Uh, so I've seen people drilling wells downtown Lebanon and if, if, <laughs> if they don't have an ordinance against it, I don't see how we can do that. I don't know. I think uh, you're right, actually. I don't think you can actually limit it. I know you can limit it, you know, the, the, tying the, back into the yeah. city water. I mean, yeah. that's a requirement by... Can I? Yes. You guys there, but I have you know, a, few, I do think. a few extra minutes here on this thing since I... Does anybody okay. have any objections to him? Speak oh, this piece? No. No, no, but I will okay. have a question after he's done. Okay. Okay. Uh, the original 
set up for this thing was, as I said, when they originally put the uh, water system in, they had to have people using it, and this was written to, to do it at that time. Uh, the ordinance, and I'm not sure which one it is, but it, it's in there someplace, uh, was considered valid at the time. I have talked to people trying and to get my well upgraded, and they have told me that you can't do that because the city of Ord Soderville has a ordinance against it. And therefore, if you the ordinance is illegal and you declare it such, I would request if it is not illegal that you people grant me a waiver. Yeah, I think uh, to Dina's point, you know, I think we need to, if that ordinance is available and something, you know, we need to review and understand before, uh, like I, say, yeah. I thought, just, I mean, we can make a waiver. Cause, yeah, cause yeah. I, don't, I, I don't believe I was on the council back when that was put in effect, because I, I joined this council a year after that, the water system was put in. So are you, I, I've heard about it. For my curiosity, are you looking at feeding your house with this water or no, just irrigating? No. I have my water, and my wife loves her garden. Sure. She, she just loves want to be able vegetables, water. she loves flowers, and I I would, by doing this, I would take a large draw off of the city of Soderville's water requirements. And, and you've got quite a bit of ground down there too, don't you? Yeah, I've got about uh, over six and a half acres on my property. I know that I, I'm not counting on anything that was told me in the before time, but I specifically asked that question of the people who used to sit in the office and was told absolutely not. You could not. So that's kind of basing what I'm basing mine on, but again, I would like to be from Missouri and have that proved. because There, I don't, yeah, there so. are several residents in the area that have secondary, well, for lack of a better term, secondary wells that they do use for irrigating their grounds and their plants and their yes. gardens, but they cannot be tied in any way to the house or the water system. Right. Right. That's what I was told yeah. Yeah. from the previous. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't see how we can prevent that well. anyways. I mean, to tell you the truth. And I, I mean, can use them as yeah. long as I don't tie That's, that's personal use that's, and yeah, for, you know, exactly as many water restrictions that we, you know, have. But well, also, you can use the water I was talking to people one time, please. Yeah. There is also an issue with water rights. Yes. Possibly. And we have to talk to the county on no. water rights of the state on that. Maybe. No. Okay. Not with water rights. You can have a well on your property and you don't have to have water rights for it. Yep. So. Yeah. Okay. I don't, I don't neither, neither, neither one of my two have. So but anyway, I'm yeah, kind I don't of. Think so. If I can speak, I'm coming in on the tail end and not exactly knowing what. But somewhere there is an ordinance. Yes. Like you said. That when they initiated the water system, they made it so that you could not drill a well or use your well. Once you're tied onto the system. Once you're tied onto the yeah. system, because they were trying to get everybody to hook up to the system. Right. And ordinance is there somewhere, and we need to find it. We and, need to change it. <laughs> and we need to change it. Uh, that's, that's all I, I, yeah. I would just appreciate it. Anyhow, thank you very yeah. much. And, that's all I have. Well, okay. if I may, Mr. Mayor, I know that uh, I will be researching this. I started looking it up today. Now that I know kind of the time frame, I can look a little better. Yeah. And I am confident by the next city council meeting we can have this resolved either to grant him a waiver if it is legal or if it's not illegal, uh, bring this to the council's that's attention that's so it can be me. abolished. Because yeah, I'd be interested yeah. in that too. Okay. What do you want, Peggy? Um, I, I would what like to know. Thing? You want to know about it too, right? <laughs> oh. Well, I know. My you question your is, yes, I do, and we do use it, but we only use it. It's nowhere near our, Main but that's not yeah. what I'm, yeah. okay. that's not my question. Okay. My question is, I know that he's doing a lot of investigating, and he's finding a lot of stuff, and, and every time Adina hears about this, she's like, wow, oh, you know, <laughs> I didn't know. And, and so what I want to know is for us who have lived in Soderville most all our lives, are we going to be told about any of this? Or is it going to be? Is the information going to be shared with us yes. about a Alex what has happened, how it happened, how it's going to be resolved? Well, Alex has posted all our ordinances, all our resolutions online. Okay. So when he when he finds stuff like that, okay. he he posts it. Unless we need to change it, then then when it gets changed, he will post that too. Okay. So he's posted everything online. For, we're trying to make okay. the city transparent to all the citizens. Okay. That's right. That's right. <laughs> and he's also Thank putting you. a You're great welcome. thing that says this one was abolished by this one. This okay. one was abolished by this one. Great. Alex has been doing a really good job of researching for us. 
I just need to remember to go down the web. Yeah. Yeah. Now that's I, I have built a second city website that just lists our ordinances mm -hmm. and our city charter and our uh, consumer confidence reports for water. Um, so I'll, I will be listing everything everything that's current and everything that's been abolished. And we'll say very clearly this is not in effect anymore. Great. Um, when it comes to the city having a wider knowledge of mm -hmm. all the, the things that are kind of a muck here, um, I, my office will always be open if anybody wants to come and talk to me. If they can't come and talk to me, and I will tell them very plainly, here's what happened, here's what I know, um, and you know, you can tell anybody you want. As long as it's a matter of public record, people okay. can come here and ask me too. So. Cool. Thanks. You're welcome. Any, any other comments from comments, um, citizens? Is that like an open? Uh, yeah. yeah. Three you got minutes. something you want to talk to? You got three minutes to. Well, I just. It'll be down the way, but I'm just concerned with a couple of the gravel streets down in my neighborhood that I'd like to see something done. So I don't know how we address that like later in public comment or, or whatever. But I had concerns when we put in that gravel, that asphalt street there on Vine, that all the water runoff with no ditches was going to start to deter deteriorate the road. And that whole lower section of Fisher is starting to get pretty bad and I filled some potholes on my street on Maple just in front of my house because I'm kind of selfish but I've just noticed that um, going down Fisher is getting bad you know and I use that road twice a day you know and, and there's yeah, always yeah. Deep fill. that's yeah right by Cravens um, you know the, it's just it's getting washed out um, and there's only three gravel streets left in the in the city there's this side of Vine Park Street the entire length of Fisher and then Maple. And both Maple's corners go Maple onto Park and Park onto Vine. Both those have big popples in it. But Vine and Knoll are also gravel, same with St. Louis and parts of Westview. Same. Those are up on the hill. Yeah. Oh, up on the top. Okay. I just, I don't know. It's just something that I would like to see something happen because they're just getting worse in my next rainy season. It'll probably be yeah. twice as bad. For most of the folks that don't use them, it's not a big deal. But um, those of you that live there do. Yeah. yeah. And you know, if we just had a grader or something came in with a tractor and was able to push the dirt that's been pushed up on the sides back into the center. That's, what, that's what we used to do in the past. But uh, I must say, our new public works person is just, you know, he's just getting started. This no, show I, too, I, so I, I get stuff it. He needs, we stuff we need to bring up so he can address the fact. I think, I think moving forward to. We, we usually forward, have, we have a great team here on the, the city, and I think these things will will, will get good. I what just, the city usually does is contact the county to bring the bring the greater out here and bring our streets for us. We used to do that in the past, mm -hmm. and it worked out pretty well. I almost waved down the guy last time he was out here a few months yeah. ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so I know part of Westview is private, public, or something, <laughs> but is all of Westview and all of that private, public? Those two are, yes, but Vine and Knoll down here, they're gravel, and they're, uh, that section of Vine is pretty darn bad. Knoll's getting pretty torn up as well. But Is that the one coming down from where the school buses come down on Vine? No. No, I'm talking no, about the big no, church. No, come back by, up by the church, go around up the corner behind you, behind your property. Yeah. That's Knoll yeah. Street up in there, that development there, and it's pretty The rough. other one is Vine and coming down uh, just the other side of Silverville Mountain on Rome, going up. The hill is also gravel, and yeah. uh, the buses are using that for school. Yeah. Do we have a scraper box for the tractor? Yeah, we do. Um, I don't know that it's heavy enough to do any good for that. I can take it out and play with it and see. I'm just curious. Yeah. But it's we, a tow behind scraper box. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I can maybe get some. There's a couple bags of dried cement. That I could probably put on top of it to weigh it down a little bit and see if I can give it a little extra. Yeah. It might be worth a try to see. Yeah. Yeah. Especially while it's wet like this, it'll tear up easy and lay down. Okay. That's, <clears throat> that's it for me. Okay. Yeah. Anything else? Okay, moving on. City recorder report. Okay, I got some fun stuff here for you. <laughs> uh, so, first off, the uh, city finance update is in the uh, city council packet. Um, there should be a list of the most recent uh, reconciliation reports for our uh, checking account and our state pool account. Um, I think if you look as of today, the checking account has... Um, put it. <coughs> One second. Our checking account has 54000 and our state pool account has 146000 
So we're, we're looking a lot better than we were a few months ago, and uh, after today, hopefully, we'll be looking even better. So uh, last month was kind of like DEFCON 5 for city finances collapsing, and uh, we are doing way better today. So Good. As evidenced by no heat in the office for a while. <laughs> yeah, that was fun. Yeah, now that I know there's money, we can turn the heat back on. Good. Um, one thing I wanted to go over was uh, the AGCO finance. A loan bill so that that first month there were certain things that I didn't know about and that was one of them I'm um, usually you know we have an accountant who prepares the bills and uh, the Agco finance loan for a tractor was like the one thing that uh, she forgot and I didn't know about so I ended up paying a couple months worth of payments via ACH one so we didn't default and two so we can stay ahead in case something like this happens again there is another one that Roger and uh, Dina signed tonight so that we're current with the next bill that comes up um, but I wanted to see if the council is interested in <coughs> authorizing uh, the monthly payments of this loan via ACH rather than a check so that there's no, never a danger of falling behind again. Mm -hmm. I know this, this happened last fall, that the city didn't pay the bill for several months and had to pay a very large check after that. So that was the idea behind ACH. If the council is interested in doing it, we can do that. If not, we can continue paying by check. Aren't there actually two loans? I know that there was like two things coming through through the AG ADCO. Um, I think that's the combined payment through AGCO, is that certain amount per month that's like $230 or so. Okay, What's remember, that acronym for? AGCO Finance. Agricultural oh, Company okay. or something. Yeah. But I thought there, I thought Linda had said there were like two different loans or two different somethings. Yeah, there is, I know there's another loan payment we have that's something we'll get some more clarification from her on. I think it's an Infrastructure Finance Authority loan or something like that. So, uh, did the council want to vote on uh, ACH, or do we want to just continue paying that check? Will they give you a discount if you go that way? A lot of times they'll do that. No, we no. just uh, don't have to worry about it being paid later again. Okay. So that's kind of a discount. I'm all for it, so. I don't see a downside. Yeah. Okay. I see an upside to it myself, so. Well, there is a suggested motion on there, if you would like to make it. I'll make a motion that we... Uh, would you call it ACH? Uh, there's a there's a, a suggested motion written down for you. Okay, all I got to do is find it, right? Yeah. I'll do it. I move to authorize the monthly payments of the loan and ADCO or to ADCO finance via ACH. I'll second that motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Nays. <coughs> okay, I just got it. Okay. okay. Next one up is talking about uh, lobbyist registration. So if uh, in my capacity as city recorder, I am lobbying for legislation, whether that's laws that affect the city uh, in Salem, specifically not in Washington, D.C., or if I'm uh, lobbying for appropriations for the city, uh, then the GEC has to be made aware of that. There's a quarterly, quarterly report that has to be filed. And there, there are actually two reports, one that I fill out as the city's designated lobbyist and one that somebody from the city fills out as a designated employer. Um, so I had talked to uh, President Alvarez about that, and uh, she wanted to have the council discuss who uh, is interested in being the person who officially files the report. It's very simple to put together. <coughs> um, lobbying is going to be a very small part of what I do. There will be a little bit more of it during the legislative sessions, but uh, the idea is that I want to start talking a little more with the peers in the area, and I know things that happen in Salem are going to come up. Um, under state law, if you're talking to other local governments specifically about state legislation, that does count as lobbying and it does have to be reported to uh, the GEC. So I just want to make sure before I'm talking to everybody about things that are going to happen next year that we're registered. So um, is there anybody on the council who wants to do this? I just want to add a little background. When we yeah. interviewed um, Alex, he talked about lobbying for us and to do the due diligence. Because I didn't know what the heck we were doing. I did check with um, LLC and CIS and all those initials if this was the standard because I've never heard of this being done before in our, our front office. And they said absolutely the person that sits in that chair does lobby on our behalf. That given his political, he may be in his own time doing lobbying, but it was absolutely appropriate for him to lobby as our representative. So we did check that just to make sure. So what does it entail? Just having discussions with Salem officials or? So anytime I talk to a state legislator or talk to another local government leader about uh, legislation that is uh, proposed or um, that is on the floor for consideration in Salem, that is that counts as lobbying. So if I'm talking about that on the city's dime, then I need to report that to the GEC. Okay. 
So there's no permits or anything like that that we've got to pull as a city to no, have you as a lobbyist no, or something like that? No, this is this is it. You just have to file and say Alex is going to be the city's lobbyist. Uh, okay. And um, he said he spent this much money, and yes, he did. Yeah. We want to make sure that the reports match up. If I say I was paid this much to do lobbying, you know, for example, if I go spend a day in Albany talking to the county commissioners about something, um, I'd put that down there, and then the city would say, yeah, we paid him those wages that day. And, so yeah. is that above and beyond normal wages, or is that... No, no, no. Okay. Yeah, you're not, you're not going to be charged anything extra. Okay. Yeah, it's it's free to file. Well, that sounds um, like a no-brainer, then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I'll benefits, no losses. Yep. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, yes, we have just, who wants to be responsible yeah. for doing the city part of the report? You mean one of us has to be? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh. So I can help you fill that out. It's a really simple thing to do. Um, I'll have all the information prepared beforehand. You'll just have to come in and I'll, I'll probably even type it in myself. You just have to type in your signature electronically and then click submit. That wouldn't so, be the mayor? If he wants to. Do you like computers, Roger? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, you like I wanted him to open it up to everyone. I told him I'd use, be his fail safe if nobody really wanted to do it. Um, but, I, I'm more available most of the time than you are, but I know you've been spending a lot of time in the office. Well, actually, yeah, I think you're the one that's dealt the most with League of Oregon, right? Uh, so the League of Oregon cities. You're just... billing me privately, wouldn't you? <laughs> <laughs> Working on that. But, yeah, if you don't want to do it, I can do it. But, I, I don't mind doing it. I just don't want to be the only one doing stuff and yeah. taking over anything. I wanted to open it up if somebody else said, wow, I'd really like to do that. Yeah. I'm, I'm happy to step back. To I'm, I'm feeling late tonight, so I'm kind of... Yeah. But I'm, I'm feeling lost with all the people I've got here in, my part, in, my part, in front of me right now this council meeting. But, uh, so, if you don't want to do it, I can do it. By default, so, I will do it if no one else wants to do it. Players. Would you like to? Okay. That's great. And i got to go finish reading that book he sent me. Oh, yeah. Okay. So do you need a motion or what do you need? Uh, it's just something we'll do. We'll fill out some paperwork later. Okay. All right, next up, QuickBooks payment. So our QuickBooks uh, desktop subscription is coming to an end, and QuickBooks isn't really doing desktop software anymore. They're moving to something you have to use your web browser for. Right, it's um, online now. Yeah, and not only is it ending May 31st, they actually took away our ability to do payroll through QuickBooks. So this week, instead of taking 10 minutes for our accountant, she had to do it all in an hour by hand. Uh, and then Roger had to sign some additional paperwork, and that had to be sent to the IRS via snail mail. So... Um, the easiest thing for us to do, I mean, we have to update QuickBooks in order to be able to do payroll and then keep all of our files working. Um, so you can either pay that with a card or with a bank draft. Um, I don't have uh, enough credit to be able to take on that responsibility every month and be reimbursed. So the recommendation is to pay uh, the QuickBooks subscription via bank draft. Didn't you say you wanted to go to a different format anyways? So I do have my own software that I use to keep track of everything, but QuickBooks is a lot better for managing payroll. Uh, plus, we have several decades worth of right. financial Yeah, we don't want to lose that, for sure. We don't want to lose that. So um, our, our accountant is the most familiar with QuickBooks, and she still uses it for accounts payable and for payroll. So she wants to keep it here so that she can use it. Um, I use my own ledger to make sure I'm backing things up and making sure that uh, there's just another layer of eyes on the finances. <coughs> so... That's that. So it changed to where it's like a subscription yeah. type of software instead of something that you... Yeah. It was freeware before, right? Uh, no, you had to. We had to pay a fee. Okay. So, But it wasn't monthly, right? Um, there is like a monthly um, service charge for it. It's, like, it's only like a few dollars to do that. Um, and then we pay an annual fee to use it. So the problem is that now they're not lo no longer doing this annual fee for a software program with a few dollars per month for support. It's um, it's a forty dollar per month charge for something that is only in your web browser. So that's what QuickBooks is now. It's a website, and it's only accessible by you and a password, right? Yeah. Okay. So if you want to use. Uh, Bank draft to pay. There is a suggested motion on there for you. Yeah, I'll make a motion that we uh, authorize the payment of QuickBooks via the bank draft. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Nay. Okay. Oh, you vote? Uh, no. Wait. No nays. No. Okay. <laughs> oh, oh, no, no, I'm, I'm, I'm lost again, as you said. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
So I wanted to update y'all next on the water bill uh, payment options. Um, so I, I looked at the, the easiest thing we can do to set up an online bill pay option is PayPal. I'm not kidding. It took me less than 60 seconds to create an online bill payment option for the city using PayPal. Uh, that could be put on our website. Um, so that was the easy thing. The thing we want to do first is to wait until the new radio water meters are installed to see it, uh, what vendors are compatible, if there's some sort of online payment system we can use. So we'll wait to install those, and then we will uh, look at the best payment option. The other Alex, thing, oh yeah. You might be able to email Tim and get that information right from him. <coughs> I will do that. Um, the other thing is uh, community, community Services Consortium in Albany. Uh, is everybody here familiar with that one? Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a community nonprofit that provides you know, social services for people in the area. Um, those are all paid for by federal grants. So um, one of the things they do is uh, utility assistance. So uh, if uh, like anybody in the county can get uh, electricity bill payment assistance through this organization, that's they get federal money and they use it to help people pay their bills. Now they can do that for cities, but the cities have to sign an agreement saying we're willing to accept federal money to pay the bills. Uh, that's done at no cost to us. Um, really what happens is if we're willing to sign this agreement with CSC, um, basically what happens is we send out the water bills and the check that comes back to us is paid for by this organization rather than the property owner. So it seems like a no-brainer to add this uh, assistance uh, for people in the community. Right, that way it gets paid directly to the city and doesn't go through people's hands to go some other direction. Yeah. So, okay. And it doesn't tie our hands as far as if they're non compliant with the payment system, getting to the point, which I would never want to do, but having to stop their service. There's nothing <coughs> within that contract that ties our hands in managing our business. I don't think so. Um, I will send the contract out to everybody so we can review it. I don't think that's in there. Um, the goal is that you know if, if people have a bill to pay, then that they can't pay themselves, this will be used there. Um, and I don't think that there ends up being some sort of impediment to that. And that's awesome. And you can also, also make suggestions to those people also, correct? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think it's a good deal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I will uh, put this on the council agenda next May. I didn't want to add it tonight because we got so much to go through. Um, Public Works Report, JD, it's your time to shine. <clears throat> All right, City Wells produced 487,700 gallons last month. You know, obviously, we trucked in zero gallons. We sold 429,300 gallons, which is a difference of 558,400, or about 12%. So, yeah. Sorry, I was just looking at it, and it says minus. 11.9, I was just curious if that was an error or a typo. That's basically a loss of 12% water. Oh. oh, 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 okay. Pretty heavy loss. No, nah, not really. <laughs> I thought it was the difference between what we sold and, and what we produced. So. Does that mean somebody's got a leak? That means the city has a leak. There's leaks everywhere all the time. Every water system has leaks. Either we have leaks of or some of our meters are running too slow and right. not stop filling out the water. That's why we put yeah. these meters in. So, I just misunderstood. I was yeah, thinking maybe yeah. that was a typo that needed to be corrected no, before we approve the next minutes. The difference is what you saw there, the 58,000, which makes it a loss. Right, gotcha. So, yeah. um, the CCR, Consumer Confidence Report, was completed and posted on the city's website. Um, URLs were passed out in the last bill to that. Also, they were posted on the bulletin board down below. Um, Radio meter, read meters um, were to be, the wells had them installed yesterday. Um, they're the homes, we hung door tags today. Mayor Perry, myself, and Hector Alvarez helped uh, hang door tags today. Is that the orange ones? Yeah, yes. you should have found one on your truck as well. Yeah, I've, yeah I'm special, I got two of them. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, the guys came from Camstra and hooked up the wells yesterday. Well 1 is still offline because Well 1 did not have a meter prior. So had to do all new plumbing for Well 1 and install a meter. I will turn Well back, 1 back on tomorrow around 10 a.m. And with all hopes that there will be no leaks. Um, your other three wells that are running right now are not keeping up with demand. Um, so, well, one is 
your workhorse, and hopefully everything will be back to good tomorrow when I turn it back on. Um, yeah, I was going to hang the door tags a couple days ago, but I did not have confirmation from Camstrom when they were going to be available to install the meters. And that will be between the 16th and the 27th. It'll probably be one or two days that it'll take them to do it, depending on how many guys they can get down here. So will can I have a question? Yeah. So will people's water be turned off temporarily and then absolutely on? it'll have okay. to be turned off to pull shut off, pull the meter, the old meter out, maybe dig around if the homeowners don't help with that part. That was on the door tags also. I hate to be caught in the middle of a shower. Right. <laughs> so you know, look outside before you take your shower. If you see a crew around your water meter, then know it's going to be off for maybe a half hour. Yeah, don't shoot them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> see, there you are, taking the fun. Most of them will go a lot quicker than that. Can you give those dates again, please? They were on your door tag that you received today. Okay. Good job on those door tags. Very Thank professional you. looking. Thank you. Um, but the 16th through the 27th, Peggy, of next month. Next month of okay. May. Um... Both basketball backboards have been replaced finally. The second one I finally got up with Count, or Mayor Perry's help the other day, or a couple weeks ago now. We ground the ears off of the... Support rods. Yeah, the support rods, because it looked like that was what was digging into the other ones and breaking them. So hopefully these one, the one that was done like almost a year ago hasn't broke, so hopefully they will both be good now for okay. quite some time. Um, streets, nothing to report, but I will look at Fisher and a few others and see what I can get with that bucket or blade. And also I will contact the county and see what they might be able to assist me with on some of that. Um, miscellaneous, the truck was out of commission for most of the week or most of the month. And it is back running right now and hopefully we, um, the mayor put a new starter solenoid in it and hopefully that will eliminate the problems for some time. We do. Um, nice job, Roger. Yeah. Thank you for doing that. Yeah, the well meters, the well meters have been replaced. Um, so I am not reading the wells every day right now, and therefore whoever's on call, covering on call, will not need to read the meters. Um, I can look up all that information once I get the program and see what was going on between then and so your Saturday apprentices were fired. Yeah, <laughs> and fees were collected. <laughs> um, yeah, weekend coverage. I have a calendar here with the on-call keys. Happy to get somebody the on-call phone for the weekends. Um, we did, Alex and I did meet with Brownsville. And unfortunately, Carl, their public works director, wasn't at the meeting because he forgot about it and a medical appointment, um, but we did meet with Scott, their city manager, and Alex and him have transferred back and forth a contract, and I believe it's signed, and they are willing well, to. It's on approval for the agenda tonight, so we'll read I'll that, discuss that, that later on. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so that is something for later. Also, for later, I'm asking for an amendment to Ordinance 1503, Section 5-15, in order to add to it a vertical clearance of six feet for the water meters. Um, and I know I'm not six feet tall, but if it's six feet instead of five and a half, I don't walk into a branch right here. Or, you know, if you're wearing a ball cap or a cap and you don't see those branches, and then, yeah, that's all I have. Any questions? I want to I want to revisit the on call coverage because that has been out there for months and months and months and months. And to clarify that that <coughs> that is for Friday, Saturday, Sunday. That is my understanding. Someone will pick yeah. up the keys and the phone and be available for nine one one calls. Basically, yeah. And if those nine one one calls occur, is that what we reach out to Brownsville for? You, or can, we, you can reach out to me. And then if you can't get me, then reach out to Brownsville. And so when are we going to start this thing that's been I'm on the table to start for today. forever? I'm happy to start it today. I have, a, I have the rest of this month, May and June, if you guys, if you councilmen would like to pick weekends or whatever and get that started after tonight, that would be great. 
and basically we have to read the meters on the weekends. And no, 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 no more reading the meters. No, no, no. So basically, you just got the keys to the palace and the yeah. Yeah. Have someone calls. And someone calls up. So they got a water leak. You got to check it out and see what you need to do to fix it. Basically, okay. so who do you have to call to fix it? Or who you call to fix it? Yes. Yep. Do we want to talk about the best way and easiest way to make sure that this is taken care of? Do we want to like, I'll take the first and the second and the third and the fourth and fifth, or just look at the, because you've got rides you want to do. How do we want to do this so A, it gets taken care of and not at the last minute, and nobody shoulders more of the burden than they should? Any ideas? And <clears throat> Councilor Jackman, after the meeting, I'll give you a key to City Hall. Because the plan is just to leave this, the keys and the phone at City Hall, and for whoever to pick them up or drop them off Monday morning on the way through. So since there's only two key fobs, people are going to have to know the code. Yes, and did the code yes. ever get changed? No. So, so I'm. So. if the councilmen don't know what the code is, I will give them, or Alex can give them that information. Did the... Um, I've set off the alarm kind of once, but I was able to shut it off one time. Did the the auto call numbers get changed? Okay, so that they weren't calling older people. Yeah. Previous I'm old. people. Yeah. Hmm? Sure. I'm yeah. older. Previous. I'm older than you, dear. So how would we like to do this so that we walk away with something taken care of this time since we've been talking about it for forever? You got your calendar be bent so you know what you're available for. Here's the one, that's a calendar, here's the one I created. The weekends are in the center of this one, and a little bit bigger. So if you guys wanted to write your names on them, or however you wanted to. Do you want to take, do I hold this off till later on the yeah. meeting, get the message done the, the citizens, or not? Yeah, it's probably a better idea for us to wait until the end of the meeting and then yeah. have us all yeah. take. I just that, don't want us to walk away and yeah, yeah. Care I know. Of I the door is I'm just thinking. Yeah. Things got other people here that may not be. I'm going to beat you with my cane. We would like to, like to <laughs> carry on the meeting with we'll a gut. Perfect. Okay. So, slidey table to, to later on in the meeting. Or late after the meeting. Okay. So, next thing we got to do is see where we are. New business, resolution 22-01, a resolution declaring the transfer of funds from the state pool account number 40, 30, 40, 43. Yep. Uh, so there's a script for you. It says uh, state pool on the top. And this one it says state pool up. right here, the LGIP? Yes. Okay. Yep, the, the, the acronym okay. is local government investment pool. We call it the state pool because it's operated by the state of Oregon and the state treasury. Okay. Okay, I will now open a public hearing to accept testimony regarding resolution number 2201, resolution declaring a transfer of funds from the state pool account number 4043. The hearing will be conducted as follows. I will make the opening statement and, and set any ground rules. This will be followed by disclosure of ex parte contact or conflict of interest on the part of the council members' public testimony then will be given by others in support or of the application and finally by those who oppose the, the request. Council members may ask questions and speak at any point in the hearing. The public will have to, the opportunity to ask questions during the public testimony. Okay, I keep on reading this all the way down. Yep. Set ground rules. When testifying, please give your name, address, and for the record, record and those of you testifying, please give testimony related to the application and be concise as possible, although this is not necessary. In most hearings, we may ask you to limit your testimony to, to no more than three minutes. Okay. Does any, does any member of the audience have objections to the council of jurisdiction in this matter? No. Does any member of the council have conflict of interest with regarding to this request? No. Are there any questions from the council? From, any questions from the council members? No. Okay, staff. I, guess I staff. got one question. Oh yeah. So we received approximately forty thousand dollars. Is that already in this budgeted number, or is that something we're going to receive? That's so. That's everything that's in our pool account right now. Well, said so the city received approximately forty thousand from the state. Yes. So 
that is already put into this fund here. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So we're just moving it from here to, to here. There. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Staff report. City recorder Alex Haddon McHadden will give the staff report. Okay. Let's open this up. This should be fun. So uh, we budget to get a lot of money from different sources throughout the year. The general fund is budgeted to receive several thousand dollars from the state pool account. Uh, the state gives the city of Sodaville and every city that elects to receive it um, sometimes automatically revenue from uh, liquor taxes, cigarette taxes, <coughs> and uh, we have not passed a ban on the sale of recreational marijuana. So every year we get marijuana money. Um, we also get uh, dividends from uh, interest collected in this account, and uh, the county sends all of our property tax revenue to this account, and uh, we also get state highway money that's meant to be used for roads. Now, during this year, about $40,000 worth of all of that has been put into the state pool account. The budget uh, accounts for it to be sent from the state pool account into the general fund and the streets funds to operate the city. Um, so during this year, because we haven't transferred any of the money we meant to use over, um, we've really been running the city on water funds rather than uh, property taxes and everything else that the budget intended. So tonight uh, we're just here to move that $40,000 we've earned into the checking account so that we're using um, the money that we intended for the projects they were intended to be used for. Okay, that's it. Okay, public testimony. All people wishing to testify, please remember to give your name and address for the record. Does anyone wish to testify in rebuttal to the testimony that has been offered? Okay. I will now close the public hearing dis discussion, discussion. Before I close, the, close or continue with the public hearing, is there any additional questions from the council members, staff, or anyone that has testified? Once the hearing has been closed, only council members or staff may speak. The public testimony is? No council, no one there? Okay, public testimony is over. The public hearing is now closed. The council shall now discuss the resolution and make its decision. I make a motion to adopt resolution 22-01. A second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <coughs> Opposed? Motion carries. Okay. Ooh, that's a lot of work. <laughs> uh, yeah, especially, I mean, especially <laughs> my reading. It's lousy. But, yeah. <coughs> You're doing a great job. Okay. <laughs> Let me see, is this the next resolution here? Yeah, that should be the uh, public hearing to consider amending Ordinance 1503. Um, on top, it should say nuisance written on 10 for you. Mm -hmm. This is oh, this right here. Okay. Yep. <clears throat> Look at the wrong paperwork here, I guess. Okay. Public hearing is now open. I shall now open a public hearing to consider amending the Ordinance 1503. This hearing will be conducted as follows. I will make the opening state I will make the opening statement and set the ground rule ground rules. They will be followed by the disclosure of ex parte contact or com conflict of interest on the part of council members, City Recorder Alex McHadden will be present. Uh, will present the amendment to the ordinance fifteen oh three. Council members may ask questions of uh, the speaker at any point in the hearing, public will have an opportunity to ask questions during public testimony. Okay, set, setting ground rules. When testifying, please give your name, address for the record, and for those testifying, please give testimony related to the application and be as concise as possible. Although it is not necessary, in most hearings, we may ask you to limit your testimony to no more than three minutes. Does anyone in the audience have any questions about the council's jurisdiction in this matter? Does any member of the council have any conflict of interest in regards to the request? If so, please indicate the nature of your conflict of interest and leave the council table if necessary. Has any council member had pre-hearing contact with any party involved in this case either for or against this proposal, the proposal. If so, please explain your pre-contact, pre-hearing contact. Okay, staff report. 
So uh, this is an amendment to uh, Ordinance 1503, <coughs> which establishes public nuisances. Our public works director mentioned it earlier. Uh, it's uh, currently we have an ordinance that says you need to have your uh, water meter box cleared with a three foot diameter around it. This specifies a six foot height for that so that we don't bump our heads walking in. Pretty simple. So I make a motion that we accept. Oh, well, yeah. oh, yeah. 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 Okay. oh, sorry. Yeah, there's no questions. <laughs> okay. I thought that, that was finalized right there. <laughs> uh, okay, so I will have Alex Manhattan, the city recorder, read the ordinance in its entirety unless someone in the council would like to make a motion to have the title read by title only. The city recorder has fulfilled the charter requirements for the ordinance to be read in, by title only. I'll make the motion we just read it by title only. I'll second. Okay. Any, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Okay. Motion carries. All right. I will go ahead and read it by title. One second. Okay, uh, Ordinance 1503, an ordinance prohibiting and enumerating those nuisances that affect the public health and safety, providing a nuisance abatement procedure, authorizing use of the City of Sodaville Enforcement Ordinance to abate nuisances, and to enforce the provisions of this ordinance and to repeal Ordinance Number 1102 and all amendments thereto in declaring an emergency. It's been read by title. Wow, that's a title. Does anyone on the council staff have any questions? Okay, I hit that page. I guess, right? Yep. All people wishing to testify on behalf of the ordinance will now testify. Remember to give name and address for the record. Um, Joseph Parsons, 38136 Maple Street, has more concern with the nuisance of the debris inside the box. Um, how do you, you no know, digging out all the dirt? I try to do that once in a while, but how do we keep that from? Filling up again? Filling up again is, I mean, can you fill it with rocks or? That's a very good question. Because like, moles are the ones that fill it up. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I think that's all in the same ordinance, correct? Yeah, it is. Um, it's, yeah, the dirt's always moving. Mm -hmm. The ground's moving. The moles and stuff are there. Some people dig under and put a space and put some pea gravel, and that seems to help with the drain. That will help. Okay. Yeah. All right. Any more questions? Okay. It's not a guaranteed solution, but it, yeah. <laughs> do do any do any council members or staff have any questions? All people wishing to testify in opposition of this ordinance will now testify. Give your name for. The, an address for record. Okay, so again, does, do, they, do, do any council members or staff have any questions? <coughs> do any the people wish to testify? I don't see anybody. Does anyone wish to testify in, in rebuttal to any testimony that has been offered? Okay, I will now close the public hearing, this discussions. <coughs> Before I close, or continue the public hearing. Are there any additional questions from the council members, uh, council members of staff, or any others that have testified? Once the hearing has been closed, only council members or staff may speak. Okay, public testimony is now over. The hearing is closed. The public hearing is now closed. City council shall now discuss the ordinance and make its decision. And I need a motion. I move to adopt ordinance resolution number 2202 amending ordinance number 15 03. Have a second on that? I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. <clears throat> Now, open the public hearing. No, 
will now open a public hearing to consider adopting a supplemental budget for the fiscal year 2021 and 2022. The hearing will be con conducted as follows. I will make opening statements and set the ground rules. This will be followed by dis disclosure of ex parte contact or property interest on the part of the council members. Public testimony will be given by others in support of this application and final finally by those opposed to the request. Council members may ask questions of the speaker at any point in the hearing. The public will, will have the opportunity to ask opportunity to ask questions during the, the public testimony. When discuss it, when testifying, please give your name, address for the record. For those of you testifying, please give your testimony related to the application and be as concise as possible. Although there is ne not necessary but most, in, but in most hearings, but may be asked to, to limit your testimony to no more than three to five minutes. Does any member of the audience have any questions for the City Council or jurisdiction in this matter? Does any member of the City Council have conflict of interest in, with regards to this request? No. All people who wish to testify, please remember to give your name and address for the record. If any people wish to testify for or against adopting a supplemental budget for the fiscal year of 2021-2022? No. Does anyone wish to testify in rebuttal? For the yes, you have a question. Uh, shouldn't it be 22-23? Yeah, it's 22-23. 22-23, I'm going to speak on my sheet. Yeah. 22-23. Okay. Okay, good. Because you said 21-22. No, sorry. Okay. No, it is 21-22. It is, right it is 21 okay. It's the current fiscal year. 21-22. Yeah. So we're, we're adopting a, a, a an amendment to this year's budget. So it is 21-22. Yeah. to 22. A supplement. Oh, to amend it. Yes. Okay. Yeah. That, a supplement that's the key word. To amend it, so. <laughs> okay. So is that wrong then? No, 2203 is the name of oh, okay. the resolution. It's not 2223. Okay. Okay. That's where I'm getting confused. Okay. Though, so our, our, our official city script doesn't include a staff report, so I can go ahead and get that so we can explain to the public um, okay. what's going on there. So the city received $60,000 from the Legislative Assembly uh, last fall, and that uh, we uh, signed a grant agreement with uh, the state for to use that $60,000 to purchase new radio water meters. So uh, we have uh, received an executed copy of that agreement signed by the state and that was approved by the council. Uh, so now we're integrating that $60,000 into the city budget. That winds up being about uh, $41,000 for equipment and uh, $19,000 for services to help install stuff. We're also creating a line item for equipment in the budget uh, that goes into the water enterprise fund. Okay. Yep. Just curious, was this a grant or a, uh, a, a uh, city or the state giving us something that they have to pay back? This is a grant from the Legislative Assembly. Okay, thank you. Yeah, for community ball assistance. Okay, does anyone wish to testify in rebuttal of this testimony that has been offered? Before I close, before I close or continue the public hearing, is there any additional questions from the council members or, staff, or of the staff or anyone that has testified? Once the hearing has been closed, only council members or staff may speak. Public testimony is now. If not, public testimony is now over. Okay. Public hearing is now closed. The council shall now discuss and make its decision. How much do you spend usually a year on meters now? Do you know? Spend on them? Yeah, as far as repair and, and support of them. <coughs> the last several years, well, I've been here for one. Right. The last several, there's been relatively no money spent on them. Um, they should, the older meters should have been being replaced um, several a year, but they're just, they, I don't know what my predecessor did there. But he hadn't done that for a couple of years. Oh, okay. He had a program for doing it, but for whatever reason, two or three years ago, something happened where he wasn't doing that anymore. The meter, the current meters have a, I believe, it's been a while since I've done the research on that, a 20-year battery in them. 
um, guaranteed for 10 years at 100% replacement, 15 years at 50% and then prorated after that. So you're getting new meters next month and figure on setting them aside to replace them in 15 to 20 years. Right. That's what that $1,200 basically is for, is for future costs in, right? So we didn't have a line item for repairing meters in the budget already. Yeah? So, uh, Which is something that needs to <laughs> be looked at because I have no spare parts of anything. Right. So if anything happens, I have to well, Bank and borrow just let that go and I can get those parts. Okay. So, yeah. So yeah, I guess we need a line item for that. Wow. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Council makes a motion to to adopt or the second and seconded mayor and council members to vote by roll call. I move to adopt resolution twenty two oh three. Do have a second on that? I'll second. Okay. Um Alex, you want to do the roll call? Uh Mayor Perry? Aye. Council President Oliveris? Aye. Councilor Hensley? Aye. Councilor Jackman? Aye. Councilor Lewis? Aye. Motion passes, Mr. Mayor. Happy yeah. dance. <laughs> okay. Okay. I don't think it's the next one. Huh? Next one. Yeah. Brownsville IGA. Okay. Yeah, yeah. No. Oh, no, we don't need to do that. Huh? Oh. I'll just say it's contract review board, so. Huh? Actually, yeah, just read the script. Okay. A call, a call to order this public hearing for the city of Sotomayor contract review board at this at time, at this t at time uh, five, to, five minutes to eight. 7.55. 7. Okay. My clock says 7.58. Mm. Okay. <laughs> 7.58. Okay. 7.58. Okay. Staff discussion request request for the city recorder to review the contract. So uh, after discussion of the council and the public works director, we uh, about um, uh, temporary personnel replacements or needs for on-call services. Uh, we decided to discuss with the city of Brownsville the potential for an agreement uh, to have that city provide on-call services uh, when our public works director is on vacation or infirm or otherwise unable to perform those duties. Um, and part of the reason that Brownsville ended up being the best place to go to is that Brownsville actually already has this arrangement with the city of Halsey. Uh, it's also in Lynn County. So basically they were able to just copy and paste that contract for us to use, that same thing. Uh, they're a very generous group of people who like to help out. And um, can I? Yeah, yeah. They have the same meters and system that we're going to, so they will also be able to know our computer and how to work wow. that and look stuff up. Cool. Awesome. Yeah. So I uh, talked it over with the city administrator. He's going to recommend uh, that same thing. Their next council meeting is the 26th, so their city council is going to ratify this agreement, and our city council can ratify it tonight, and it will go into effect. You are also provided a, uh, a copy of their resolution for the prices that they charge uh, for um, when uh, other entities uh, use their staff or equipment and materials. Um, the city administrator there says that they will do cost fitting for the city of Soderville. So it's probably not going to be uh, the same prices that are in there. Um, we'll probably get a better deal than uh, just somebody, <coughs> private company or something like that. So I'm very excited by this and thank you, JD, yeah, for building that relationship. They've offered to help from day, almost day one. Their public works director has been very, very helpful. Thank you for overcoming past history. Yeah, yeah that actually is a very yes. good deal. <laughs> Okay. We any any public comment on this con this con on this contract? Okay. I close this public hearing of the City of Sotterville Contract Review Board at this time, which is seven fifty-nine. Is there any additional uh, council or staff discussions? I entertain a motion to vote on a group of this contract. You need a motion on move to adopt the local government public works cooperative assistance agreement with the city of Brownsville. Do we have a second on that? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? 
Okay. Motion carries. Motion carries. It's a very good deal for us. Yes. Yeah, it's okay. Exciting. So is this going to be a line item on our budget now? Uh, no, that'll just come out of the the current funds that we have to pay the public works director instead of those paychecks going to well, sorry, it, not instead of going to JD. It's just when uh, their people have to be used, it'll come out of the fund that's okay. in there. So we'll we'll take a look if there needs to be some adjustment to that uh, in the budget. And it's good that this is uh, the next thing we're talking about is the budget. Okay. Item, uh, well, city council meeting shall now resume. Brilliant. Thank you. Okay. Item 10E. We need to appoint members to our budget committee. So uh, there's a little bit of a procedure over here under the city charter. The mayor nominates people, um, and then the city council can approve anybody that the mayor nominates, or they can vote against approval. <laughs> uh, if uh, a member of the council, or if a if a member of the public who is uh, nominated by the mayor is a relative or immediate household member of a member of the council, have to abstain on the, the vote to confirm that appointment. Um, but Otherwise, you know, they can vote on anybody else, mm -hmm. pretty much. So, how um, does it work with the people that have come in before and talked about being interested in? I know that we have one lovely lady here who's here tonight, but other people came in and kind of said, "Yeah, I'd be interested." So, basically, the the city council will have to vote to approve anybody who wants to do that. So, so far, I know uh, Miss Lewis in the audience, I believe, is interested in serving on the budget committee. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know. Uh, the mayor can go ahead and nominate her. If I'd uh, like to nominate uh, Tammy, mm -hmm. Tammy, Tammy Lewis for being on budget. All right, and there are three different uh, terms available. So there's a vacancy for a committee seat that goes from 2020 to 2022, which means this would be the only budget you sit on for this term, and then the oh. next year you would have to be renominated. Uh, you can be uh, nominated to a term that only goes till next year, or you can be nominated to a term that goes uh, for three years. So. Go big or go home. Go big or go home. <laughs> One, two, or three. It doesn't really make any difference. I, what what yeah. do you feel comfortable with? I'm, well, as long as he's councilman, I'll serve on the budget committee. Okay. So that's at least two years, isn't it? Yeah. Well, no, his, his term ends on uh, January 2023. Yeah. So if you wanted to play it safe, you could just be nominated for this year and then. Uh, if you continue serving and you want to continue on the budget committee, we can nominate you again next year. So. That's fine. Okay. okay. Then, Mr. Mayor, uh, she would like to be nominated for a term ending in 2022. Okay. I nominate our Tammy uh, Lewis to be on our city budget for the committee for 2022. Any I don't want to do any, how do I do the rest of this? Any objection? Oh, let me see. Uh, there needs no. to be a motion to approve. Make a motion we approve Tammy okay. Lewis for the 2020-2022 vacant seat for the budget committee. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And then opposed. Councilor Lewis will have to abstain. Any opposed? <coughs> motion carries. <coughs> Joe Parsons, are you interested? Okay, great. So, so we have a 2021 to 2023 vacancy. Yeah, yeah. Or so that would be the two to twenty-four. Either one. I'm planning on running for city council, so good for we'll you. have to figure that out. <laughs> no, it's we'll okay. Really cross that bridge. Yeah. yeah. If you're elected to the council, then uh, you would just resign from the budget committee, and we'd find somebody else. So. Yeah, I'll do the. Let's do 2022 through 2024. Okay. Because okay. I was on the budget committee. I don't know when, but I was on it one year. So I make a motion that we, uh... well, Roger has to Okay, oh, I'm sorry. I'll make a motion we accept uh, no, Joe, Joe Parsons. Joe Parsons to be on our city budget for the, what is it, 2020? 2022 to 20, 2024. 2022 to 2024, they can see. I'll say Well, you'll have to motion, because he, he made a nomination. Okay, he <laughs> made a nomination, okay. I'll make the motions we accept. Nomination of Gil Parsons to the 2022 to 2024. All second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. And I guess that's all we got to do here for. Well, we have one yeah. more. There is still. Yeah. 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 Too much time doing that before. Oh, oh, on. 
Thank, Thank you for the so honor that, of the So offer. that means that you have experience. <laughs> oh, I have lots of experience. Well, Thank you very much for the honor. Yeah. So what, what I can say is that there is still one more vacancy yeah. on there, but um, before the next budget meeting, um, if we want to, we can just have a five-minute council meeting where we just yeah. vote on nominating somebody. And yeah. I'll check with my friend that. Tim. He said he'd like to be on the budget committee. Right okay. now he's in the Corvallis Hospital for another mm -hmm. five or six days with oh, wow. kidney problems, so I have to wait till he gets out of the hospital and see how he does. I know my neighbor Kirk was interested uh, in it. Yeah, that's right. Okay, yeah, so, so Spring Street yeah. is. Whatever. Yeah, it would fine too. Dead yeah. Do you want to text him and see if you yeah. yeah. Does he have to be here to accept the nomination at uh, Spring Street? Yeah. Oh, you're right, right, you're right, right. <coughs> the diagonal driveway to do it. We can just okay. make a motion and you can One turn it down. Right? You can see from That's true. Yeah. I'll have to look on the way back. It's not down that gravel street. Right? Do we know when the meetings uh, will be? So I'm going to coordinate down. with everybody once uh, we have a full uh, committee appointed to uh, figure out the best time for us to do that. Yeah. It will probably be an evening, so I'll prepare to have uh, the evening budget committee catered so that we're having a working dinner and uh, should be fun. Did I hear free food? No. Yeah. <laughs> this, this, this budget may be a little longer than last one have the last few years right. because of new new adjustments and new changes. Yeah. But yeah. It should be actually get some like correct that. figures. Yeah. That'd be nice. <laughs> yeah. All, all the numbers. Did I say that? Yeah. yeah. Out loud. Yeah. Did. I'll say it out loud. Out loud. Yeah. The, uh, yeah. the opening balance numbers. <laughs> made up. Nice. Those are fictitious. So. <laughs> Yeah. So at this point, we're just kind of in a holding pattern. Yeah. Well, we can we can nominate him, and yeah. if he turns it down, then we can Who? go for somebody else. So yeah. it's, uh, his name is Kirk, Kirk Keller. Kirk Keller. K E L L E R. Nominate Kirk Keller for uh, being on the budget. Maybe. Right. <laughs> Tell him too late, Adina. <laughs> I make a motion that we accept Kirk Keller to the budget committee. For 2021 2023. 2021 through 2023. I'll second that motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Yeah. <coughs> okay. What was that? Yeah. He came to the last council meeting. Yes. 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 The one who walks yeah. and he walks. Wants to get involved. Yeah. Good. Okay, uh, the next one is uh, an overview of the 22 to 23 budget process. So I want to clarify, this is not a public hearing on the budget. This is an overview of what we're going to do. And uh, I want to get some feedback from council members, staff, and members of the public about what you would like to see in the budget after I kind of go over it. Figures. Correct figures. Yeah, and I want that. No too. funny money. No funny money. Yeah, so our budget this year has a $900,000 shortfall. Technically, because somebody thought there was going to be nine hundred thousand dollars more uh, than there ended up being, so thankfully we didn't spend that nine hundred thousand uh, dollars. <laughs> okay, you're going to get everybody to react right now. <laughs> yeah, well, you That's should. Ridiculous. It is ridiculous. I mean, what, I, what I understand, talking with our public works director, um, yeah, there was a uh, hundred thousand dollars put in for improving Vine Street, but what I understand. That project was canceled before the beginning of the fiscal year, before the budget was even written. So that shouldn't have been put in there in the first place. Yeah. But the budget officer that year put it in there and said, we're going to get $100,000 and we're going to spend $100,000. And that wasn't even supposed to come in, and he should have known that. So. Well, and the biggest problem was that that canceled. So, oh, uh, yeah. Man. so yeah. if he knew that wasn't supposed to be in there, he shouldn't have put it in there. But he didn't, <clears> and uh, we're living with that. Uh, the other one, there was supposed to be $800,000 from the state and the federal government to work on the well stuff, intertide project, all that jazz. That didn't come in, so I think we only, get, only ended up getting 33000 from USDA for stuff that was used. <coughs> so, yeah, correct figures. It's going to be uh, an appropriate size. The, the resources I'm working on for this next fiscal year are about $400,000, which is a lot more in line with what we're actually probably going to get and probably going to spend. <coughs> Um, so, just a reminder of the way that I will be doing this, and it's the way I've done it at other uh, organizations, is that um, I started working on this uh, budget this month, and I've got it pretty much nailed down so far. Um, I will be uh, talking with um, our accountant to make sure all the numbers look good. There are a couple of things from previous years. We have to fill out previous year's information. 
uh, when we're writing this budget. So we're going to look, there are a couple of numbers that are off, but I'm, I'm pretty sure we can get that contained. Um, and that's for previous years. Uh, so I will talk with her about the numbers to make sure they look good. I've talked with JD about budget priorities that we need. Um, what's that? I was going to wait until there was a break. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Um, so I know uh, one of the, the public works priorities next year is that we need to rent some equipment to clean the city wells up. The pump is pressure wash. Yes. So I want to get a man for that. Yeah, so we will be putting funding in for that. Um, let's see. Oh, we're going to have to have accurate uh, funds uh, ready for the... Uh, the water hauling project that we do every year, this last year, we budgeted $20,000. Uh, then we moved $40,000 in from uh, the LGIP account to pay for those costs. We moved it up to $60,000, but it ended up being $85,000 this fiscal year. So uh, we need to have some real money allocated for that. Uh, if we're going to spend more than we budgeted, there needs to be a supplemental budget adopted. Um, the big thing we're going to do is uh, pass an RFP at this council meeting in the next item, uh, and that RFP will be for potable water transportation so that uh, we are we know how much money we're likely going to spend and can put a real number in that we're able to use. Um, so once that's passed, JD will call up a few different people and we'll figure out who wants to haul water for us. Have you looked at past budgets and saw what our average is. I know last year was, you know, extraordinary. I mean, that's the highest I think the city's yes. ever paid for, for water. So, yeah. I mean, do you got a good base average as to what, it, you know, it is? Yeah, I can I can look at that. Let me pull up my budget number here. Ask a good question. Sure. You still getting water from Lebanon? Yes. yes. When we truck it in, we do. Yeah. We're well, not now. Right now, we're yeah, I know. So, but, but I mean, that's your, oh, that's the source for city water right now. Yes, yes. Right. We just had issues with the size of truck and truck availability last year due to the fires and, mm. and stuff. Yeah. The water purchase from Lebanon is really inexpensive. Really, it's, it is. Yeah. It's the it's trucking the cost is what cost is immensely. And they were only able to use a fourteen hundred gallon truck. So. Like say last so, year was good. So, sorry, go ahead. It does vary wildly. So this year was eighty-five thousand um, dollars, according to our data in QuickBooks. The previous year we only spent uh, about eleven thousand dollars. The year before that it was twenty-five thousand. So it kind of goes up and down. Um, I, I don't trust your eleven thousand dollars. Yeah, I don't yeah. think I trust that either. But that is the. Well, we had more rain that year. Yeah, but I still trust it. So, like say, it started later. Number. Yeah. What, what was that about accurate figures? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's hard to say where she moved them. Yeah, you know there is where are the numbers were moved to. There's thirty thirty thousand dollars that's unaccounted for in there, so maybe that's where it went. I've <laughs> okay. yeah. thought about putting a second so initial investment. Yeah, yeah. we've talked. That was about yeah, we've about talked about the little. second water tower. You mean? Nothing but water. Yeah, it's been. It was supposed to be on that. Big $900,000 yeah. budget that mm -hmm. got screwed up, but that's so, a sore subject for me. We'll fix that too. <laughs> All right, uh, so the way that I was going to look at changing around the budget is right now we have <coughs> three funds. There's the general fund, there is the street fund, and there is the water enterprise fund. And the way that those are managed um, kind of ends up with this weird patchwork where they're all pulling from the checking account, and then two of them are pulling from the LGIP account, I think, officially, uh, because there wasn't really any details left behind, and it really doesn't make sense otherwise. Um, this is as best as I can piece it together. Um, I originally thought about uh, making the LGIP account a separate reserve fund, uh, but I talked to uh, somebody who, uh, a, a fellow city leader, was the mayor of Elgin, Oregon, uh, for six years, and I think before that was a council member for eight years, so very well versed in these finances. And uh, his recommendation is that we keep the LGIP account incorporated in the general fund uh, for a couple of reasons. Uh, the main one being that it has much better interest. So when we get designated funds, when we get the, um, the revenue we get from the state every year, that's a much better place to put it. Also, our legal counsel is really, really begging us to put designated funds in a separate account. So right now we could open up a separate bank account at <coughs> or we could just put um, designated funds in the LGIP account, I swear. where they get much better interest. <laughs> so uh, what I wanted uh, was some guidance from here uh, tonight. Uh, is there a preference that the LGIP account remain in the general fund, or should it be used as a reserve fund? 
What's oh. your recommendation? My recommendation would be to keep it in the general fund. Okay. But it will be a separate item that we can track, right? Yeah, it is It is kept in a separate account operated by the Oregon State Treasury. Okay. Uh, right now, the council's procedure is to only move money over uh, when the council votes. That's what we voted on earlier tonight, was to right. move money over from that. Um, you know, it is, it is still easy to get into. If I wanted, I could just go in there right now and send myself all the money. Okay. I mean, technically, <laughs> that is something that can be done. I know that's a terrible thing to hear. But that's just the nature of the, the system. Yes, it has. <laughs> I was just thinking the same thing. That is just unfortunately the nature of the way the state oh. operates the online portal to the state fund. So, so it, you know, check and balance there. <clears throat> no, I mean, you do have an accountant coming up every right. month and looking at So um, if I say, oh, all the money's there, but I sent it to myself, she's still going to come in. She still has the login information. She's going to go there and go, hmm, somebody spent all of it. I wonder where it went. And uh, she'll and find that we're that, uh, I'm located around. in Mexico or something. Well. <laughs> so just so everybody knows, that is something that the state put into their online portal management system. Very, very simple mechanism for just transferring money willy-nilly, mm. which is why we have the council in charge of authorizing those transactions. So I'm not sending myself money. That would be very bad. <laughs> okay. So that is the... That is my recommendation, is that the LGFP account remain incorporated into the general fund. Uh, the other thing I would like to do is rearrange the way our funds are operated. Um, right now we have a general fund, a street fund, and a water fund, but they're all kind of mashed together anyway. Even though on, on paper they're separate funds, they're operated functionally as the same because they all use the same checking account. And the general fund and the street fund both pull from the state pool money. And the other thing about this is that at the end of the year, all of the beginning and ending fund balances are really just kind of made up because they're not <laughs> really operated as separate accounts. Um, so, you know, for the beginning balances for the funds this year, um, I just kind of, we, we had some set numbers in the budget that was passed, so I just kind of had to say, yeah, sure, that's what we had. I think they're a lot different from the money that was actually there, so I just said, we're going to use the beginning fund balance in the budget for water and the one for streets and then the general fund ended up being like a lot lower because there wasn't that much money in there. So the idea is to incorporate them all into the general fund under three different budget programs. That's something that happens in a number of other places. Um, a budget program basically does what we're doing now. Um, we would divide it, the general fund into the programs for administration, streets, and water so that um, we are still keeping money separate. We know that money is going to specific places in the budget. Um, and all of the numbers will be real. So I, I like having accurate figures. I think Councillor Jackman does too. Um, so is there any preference here for moving all of our funds into a general fund? Or would we like to continue using three separate funds? But they are still going to be two separate funds, right? So there will still be two separate bank accounts. That won't, that won't change. Okay. I mean, I like the idea real well, a lot, actually, because, you know, I'm glad to hear you had trouble figuring out the budget, too, because I went over that thing for a couple of years trying to figure it out. I couldn't yeah. figure out where the hell the money's coming from, but anyway, so, I mean, if it can get simplified to where we can understand it going forward, I think, I think it's a really good idea. Within those accounts, are you able to break, <clears throat> sorry, am I able to speak? Go for it. Are you able to break it down, like with my business account, mm -hmm. I'm able to have, I have multiple, I have one for tools, one for my vehicles, and one for something else, and then a general. So would you be able to take, like, say, the general fund account and have the a street so that, that those numbers are the same, or is it just like $50,000, we know that's in there, and then on paper you know that that's divided up between the three. Well, that's what we're doing that, now currently. Does that we have makes sense? we have the two bank accounts, and we say on paper the money is divided into three separate funds. Uh -huh. um, putting them all into the same fund really just simplifies that on paper because it's it it's it's always just been the two bank accounts, but they're split every which way, and okay. this kind of brings them together a little more. Okay. Yes, sir. Question. Yeah. Uh, does it still require a uh, action by the council to transfer funds from one uh, money from one fund to another? Yes. We just did that. Yep, that's what we were talking about. You know, the yeah, yeah. But it's going to be that way going forward, too, right? What was it? So it's going to be that way going forward, too. Absolutely. Yeah, that's that's what I was thinking, too. Yep, all, those, all the state and federal money is still going to stay in that 
other account, all of our receivables are going to go into our Chase account or our city budget yeah, account. Yeah. And then if yeah. we need to transfer funds out of the state and federal funds to support the city, it's it's still going to be done by a vote by yeah. Yeah, a vote by, by council. Yeah. So okay. I know I think right yeah, this man, year we we uh, <laughs> the idea is that this year we haven't really been transferring any of the money we were supposed to at all. all so right. what I would be doing going forward is quarterly presenting a an amount of uh, money that we've received that needs to be transferred in, and the council will move it in, and then we won't have to pay everything using water funds. Anyway, so I think that'll be helpful. Um, the last one is uh, the. Oh, did you have another question? No, I was going to say, do we need a motion? That's that was my question. No, uh, no motions tonight. I just wanted some feedback for how you want me to construct the budget, and uh, I will put that together. Now, I'm always going to be open to meet with anybody. If somebody wants to come to me and talk to me about how it's being put together, or anybody wants to sit down with me, um, even after hours, I'm willing to meet with people and just go over it and see what people think. So. Um, ideally, if a budget officer is doing their job, they will bring the budget that is going to be passed by the budget committee. Um, and that is how I like to do things. Um, I've never been to a budget committee meeting where the thing wasn't, that's usually there was only one. There ended up being something modified, but it was just like a little tweak to some advertising funds for the Union County Solid Waste District. So, um, otherwise, yeah, there really shouldn't be any tweaking necessary at the budget committee level. I should be bringing the budget that everybody wants to have. It's just the explanation of how it all works. Absolutely, yeah. Right. Yep, that'll be in the budget and message. Correct figures. Yeah. Yes, correct <laughs> figures. I'm very excited for that. <laughs> um, and the last one there is to talk about the ARPA funds. So we get $76,000 from the federal government through the American Rescue Plan Act. We've received 38000 so far, and uh, we're going to receive another 38000 this next year. I send everybody a very long list of the things that we're allowed to use. Uh, you know, there's a 45-page long manual for things you can do with this $76,000. Um, so I think we, we probably want to use it for water funds, water infrastructure. But I wanted to make sure everybody had a chance to look at that list and uh, let me know prior to, or let me know over the next week or so what you think we should be doing with it. So we can actually use those funds and put them in a rainy day account for purchase of water. That's well, exactly what I was going to ask. Yeah. Okay, how long can we hold on to it? Yeah. Yeah. Well, they want it to be spent as soon as possible. Really, Congress is Congress wants us to do uh, infrastructure, so they don't want us using it to purchase water this next year, unfortunately. They want us to buy stuff or make the city a better place or do cash assistance, quite literally. We could do a dividend. We could give everybody in Soda Village $214. Mm -hmm. How much do we have there? We had seventy six thousand, so is it readily it? available. How much is a water tank? How much is a water tank? Yeah. We could buy another water tank. <laughs> that might not be a bad idea. So <laughs> we have thirty eight thousand now, and we'll get another thirty eight thousand this fall. So that'll be seventy six altogether. So if we want to build out some infrastructure, that's kind of the thing Congress is going for, or anything to help us recover from COVID nineteen. So ideally, they want us to buy stuff or expand broadband access or, like I said, cash assistance. We could just give everybody a dividend. You know, uh, something that seems to be at every council meeting comes up and everything, and I think J.D. will probably agree, and maybe Roger will agree, maybe we need to look at driving that white pickup off over the bank right here. <laughs> Crash. And Crash. purchasing something a little better for the city to use to get around to get the job done. I can see if a vehicle is uh, something that'll work. Maybe update the computer at the compound. Yeah, we could do that with the leftover. Uh, we're I think the the quote for um, the the radio water meters was fifty five thousand, and we got sixty thousand from the state, so we can spend some of that extra on a computer for. Oh, there, there might be some bumps in that price too, depending on. Trouble getting to a meter or something. Installations well. and stuff like that. Yeah. But we at least we're covered. Right. Okay. So with this seventy six thousand you're talking about, you know, we keep having issues with that pickup and it's you know, we use it in the city. I mean J D needs something in my opinion a little bit more reliable. And I realize right now is not the real good time to look at something new for the city because of the price of things out there, but I don't know if it's going to get any better than what it is now. <clears throat> it's just my suggestion. <coughs> but we have a list of potentials, that, that book you sent us. 
Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think we need to go through and review that. Like I say, I mean, we're going to get the money. We just got to figure out how to spend it, right? And yeah. they want us to spend it reasonably soon. Is that correct? They want us to spend it probably by the end of the next fiscal year. Okay. That's kind mm -hmm. of the idea. Oh, well, we got a year yeah. to spend it then. Yeah. yeah. Like I yeah. say, that might be our rainy day fund for water, like I said. Yeah. Or you know, look at getting a new PLC up there to run everything. Mm -hmm. Right. That'll That's cost true. you 20 at least. Yeah. So. 30. Let's see. And so there, there are a few different categories. I can go over some of the things we can use it for if you want. That's all right. We can. Yeah, you set it out to us. We can review it. Yeah. Would so you like us to maybe give you? The only thing we like can't do is build a jail. Very specific. That would be nice. Would you like us to maybe give you? Each of us give you five ideas by yeah. the next council meeting or by the next whatever. If you all could do that within the next week, that okay. would be helpful. And I'm, I'm glad to accept feedback from the public as well. If anybody wants to email me or call me or come to the office and tell your friends, um, you know, this is... Tell your neighbors, too. Tell your neighbors, <laughs> yeah. I mean, this is, this is the public's <coughs> gracefully given to well, us. Well, it is, like, infrastructure and stuff. And there's the streets. Yeah. Well, well, we can always get... A greater. We can always get Probably street funds, too, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, one of the, uh, <coughs> the is uh, road building and maintenance, so I mean, that's, that's on the list. Something else that you know, I got it wrote down on my envelope here. Maybe the city could purchase a new set of flags for outside this building. They're getting really tight. I have requested them to be ordered. Okay. And they can't yeah. be embroidered and hung outside. I don't I think don't they want us to spend it on that. flags. No. Well, they want us to spend it on uh, vaccine incentives. So if we want to no. do that, <laughs> it's in there. He was just stating that the lights I, I got placed in the... And it yeah. needs a light. Is it have the light's yeah, on, on it. Yeah. Lights on it. That's it. Yeah, we can do... We can get... I think we can buy some new flags, but I don't think they want us to use our money for No. Well, yeah. Um, we could uh, pay for people to get... Brides to get vaccinated for COVID. So Say what? That's on the list. <laughs> I'll drive them. <laughs> I'm just trying to say the things that will get the most uh, reaction out of everybody. <laughs> We can uh, give it to build medical facilities. A little COVID. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Hire my services. Yes, sir. Uh, I mean, you're talking about American flag for your pull out here. Yeah. Might uh, get in touch with the American Legion, and they will probably provide you one. Okay. And do a ceremony when putting it up. That'd be yeah. awesome. Yeah. We need a state of Oregon flag, too. Yeah. We can use it for burials. <laughs> Move on. Yeah. Yep. Like I say, what's right. next? That's that. Okay. Uh, um, next I, item. Can I interject and say that Mr. Yeah. Keller declined? Oh, sad. Okay. Well, he got some personal issues. Mr. Keller oh, resigned so from the budget committee. Okay. okay. Oh, so that's all right. We can find somebody else. Has to be somebody in the city, so no right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Register to vote at property. Okay, RFP number 2022-01. So this is included in our council packet. I want to say first off a note about the city's procurement policy. The first city council meeting I was at, that was something that came up. Our public works director wanted to know more information about um, you know, how to procure, um, I think, supplies for rebuilding streets and things like that. And what troubled me is that nobody had an answer. Um, at the time, you know, the, what the state says is that if your city doesn't have its own procurement policy, then you have to use the state's policy, which is about 200 pages long and involves a 100 page long RFP <coughs> anyone who wants to apply for stuff, which means that you have, usually it's people who can afford to spend their time filling out a 100 page piece of paperwork and nobody wants to do that for the city of Sotoville. Um, but I finally found the city's procurement policy. It's from 1994 and hasn't been changed since, which means it's 30 years out of compliance. Uh, so that's something that will need to be updated soon. Um, I have a sample policy that I've used before that we can uh, have the council look at again in the future. Uh, so that means that this RFP representing is wildly out of compliance with our procurement rules, but our procurement rules are wildly out of compliance with state law, so it's kind of like... Who do we shoot? Well, that's going to be a very long litigation process if anybody wants to go crazy. Um, so what I have here is a very simple RFP that was uh, put together. Uh, I've talked with our public works director. Yes, sir. Uh, your introduction and background here, it says transport water to the city of Sotoba owns wells. We don't want wells put on there. We need it to our storage facility. 
Okay, we can uh, we can change that. What is our request for proposals? Okay. <coughs> you understand what I'm saying? We don't want to pump the water in the wells. We want to put it in our storage facility. <laughs> okay, then we can have that amended on the one that is adopted okay. by the city. Just so, just trying to get the wording correct. Is that all right with everyone? Yep. yep. Okay. That'd be a lot of wasted water. Well. Is it just playing the word game? I yeah. Think. Yeah, basically, basically changing it to instead of putting the water in the wells, we want to put it in the story. Yeah, I, I, yeah. So just yeah, yeah. like you said, the word game. Mm -hmm. Just getting it. Because everybody that, you know, looks at its proposal has to understand that's what it needs to do. Okay. We will change that. Okay. Yeah, we will. The suggested motion will then become I move to approve RFP 2022 1 as amended when we get there. Okay. Yep. Okay, so we looked at a few different numbers for this. Put that. Um, so the idea after talking with JD was I think $125 to $135 per hour with a fuel surcharge um, as a potential cost for. Uh, water <coughs> acquisition services. Uh, does anybody have any For transportation? Transportation. Yeah. Yes. Transportation. Yes. JD, did you have any other? Passed my real time. Sorry. It's <laughs> okay. Did I have your transfer for? So in our um, rather ancient and potentially defunct um, current, are they blind proposals or do you know who's doing the RFPs? Is there a rule around that? Um, I don't think the proposals are blind. I think we're going to know who's submitting what. And he's getting mailed out to the prospective bidders. Um, how, are, how are people being contacted? <coughs> this? So, let's see, make sure I get that list. So, under the current procurement policy, it says we need to have to, uh, we have a few different things we can do. Um, the purchasing agent sells solicit bids by direct mail request <coughs> to prospective bidders, telephone, a public notice posted on the bulletin board, a uh, newspaper ad in Lebanon, um, or a newspaper ad in a newspaper that uh, the purchasing agent thinks uh, will uh, allow us to get the bids promoted, or a combination of two or more of the above. So um, we can either do all or just pick two. By the way, under the rules, uh, our mayor is the purchasing agent, uh, unless he appoints an assistant. So. Uh, if you want to appoint the city recorder to be that assistant, so you don't have to do this, you can go ahead and do that now. <laughs> and by the way, this appointment is not subject to council approval, so you can just say. I think I want to appoint you to take care of that. Uh, uh, Good. Uh, uh. Very quickly. <laughs> so, do we already have people who, or we're going back to the people we've used before? Um, that is something we will leave that up to the Public Works Director to do. I know uh, Councillor Jackman has a firm that is intending on potentially bidding on this project, so cool. um, I think he will probably be abstaining on this vote. But yes, they will. Yep. Not that little engine that couldn't and charged us to drive other places. Cool. And just so we know, um, we did. I did go over the potential uh, conflict of interest with the Government Th Ethics Commission, so uh, we're not going to be violating any state laws. We know what procedures to follow. Uh, if the councillor decides to bid, he's not going to have to change his statement of economic interest. We're going to have to give the same weight to any proposal that comes in, so we can't just give it to him because he's a councillor, because right. obviously that's not good. Because we can't afford to go to jail, so. Yeah, right? Yeah, like that. Three meals a day. Three pots and a hot. <laughs> Alright, well, did we uh, have any other uh, changes to make to the RFP? Do we want to change the amount that uh, we're willing to pay for, or um, 
Why does that have to be disclosed? Uh, we want to be open with the people about how much we're willing to pay for these services. Um, obviously, we don't have a million dollars to do that. You know, so the, the idea is it's to get a big people... old budget. We don't need to accept it, right? So if well, they come in and say, I, you know, I charge $85 for my driver, you know, why do we want to disclose that up front? I mean, usually on all the bids I do at work, I don't disclose okay. the expectation of labor per hour. Okay. Well, we can remove that if you know. Counselors? The thing that I'm going to look at from last year that we got totally screwed on was... The trucking. Yeah, the trucking. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. any, why should we pay them to come from Paloma to here mm -hmm. and charge us? <clears throat> And then to drive from here back to Flummet and charge us. Oh my goodness. At a rate of $100 an hour to get here and $100 an hour to get back. I mean, time starts when you're on the job. So in other words, That's you know, cost of doing business. Uh, in my opinion, you know, if you go down to the water faucet in Lebanon and hook up the hose and purge it and turn the valve on, that's when your time starts. I agree. I think that should be I mean, stated I in there as well. I think that's something that needs to be spelled out in this thing. Okay. We can add that to the RFP. I mean, that's what what I'm saying. It's yeah. You know, I was, to be honest with you, I was pissed when I found out about this. You know, there was two trucks, 1,600 gallon tank trucks, two hundred dollars to get them here, haul for what eight hours, and then two hundred dollars to send them home. $400 is ridiculous. Day. We paid $400 every day that those two trucks yeah. worked for nothing. Not two days yeah. For nothing. Not so much every day. Yeah. And then, plus, did they yeah. charge us for the week. water that they No, no, we have the city pays for the water. Well, I know, but remember <clears> the one truck spilled kept all, the water, no, that, all that, over yeah. the place and right. almost ended up with the empty tank when he got well, up there? Well, I don't know whether it was that close. But he probably, we lost, you know, he probably that? lost 50 gallons of water pulling up the hill or something like that. And we pay for that. Right. So After they were talked to, they slowed down. Trust yeah. me, I live on that street and I yeah, saw I it. <laughs> they did slow down. I just remember one day I kept seeing that water and... After a couple of days, I'm like, "Where is this going?" Because yeah. I was, I just turned into my house, mm -hmm. and then I followed it. I'm like, "I'll be damn!" It's yeah. a freaking drip trail from the bus yes. to Walmart. Yep, all the right. way to the wells. Right there by Fort Richards. <clears throat> that's that's when it came to my conclusion. I had no idea we were bringing in water. Yeah, right. and I'd seen that for like a few weeks. <clears throat> you so, know, and, yeah, yeah, we have uh, two amendments. I'm going to start with one is to change from wells to storage facilities. Two is going to say that. Uh, the job starts um, when we're at the city of Lebanon, and not the journey it takes to get to the city yeah, of Lebanon. We're not paying any uh, uh, from the hydrant yeah, costs. Yeah, from the hydrant. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Councillor uh, Hensley had talked about wanting to take a price out of the bid so that we're not publicizing how much, but we'd like to take a price out of the bid. Yeah. Might as well just take it out of the. Yeah, I mean, they are you yeah, looking? They're, they're, they're going to bid whatever their trucking cost water is, right? Besides the city of Lebanon. No, because where would you go, Sweet Home? Yeah. Then your transport costs get higher. And yeah, but how much is the difference on the? That, 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 that's you know, my question. Yeah. Basically, the city of Lebanon water is like virtually nothing. Really reasonable as far as cost. They give us really good price break. We have held water from Sweet Home before. And now water was a little more expensive, plus the truck cost a little more expensive. But we have hauled from Sweet Home before. And the other thing... No, I'm, okay. I'm, I'm just, yeah. just asking, because if that's I remember question. correctly, yeah. when we were involved in this thing, like I say, and that's been years ago, uh, the city of water, water costs from the city of Lebanon included their tanker trucks, and they'd move up here. But it was awfully pricey. They well, don't have the, any potable water trucks. Yeah, they don't they have... They did at that time. Yeah, they, they don't, don't have, have any now, so... Yeah. I just just a jerk. Well, and the other thing you have to take into consideration too that the way the rules will be read in and you so we're going to take correct me if I'm wrong. Thank you. If you haul from Lebanon, they're going to bid it on whatever their trucking costs okay. are, anyways, right? Then you test the water, and then if you go to a different source, you have to clean the tank to haul that different source. Is that you right? Have to, yeah. 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 You yeah. have to actually purge the tank from a different source. But if you're halt, sometimes we're hiring we'll have to somebody, the number, but we never and putting that out to a bid. Okay. Labor costs. Do you need gotcha. to put on that bid any requirement of where they get the water, or is it just that they provide water at no. our tank? The up here? city, sir, 
Yeah. The city rents a hydrant from Lebanon. They have to per have to get the water from our hydrant. Yeah. Okay. Well, okay. I, I'm just just asking because I. Right. Yeah. So yeah. what what I'm trying to explain to you is if you go to Lebanon to get the water. Yeah. And you got the thing rented from the city of Lebanon down there, everything's cool. You just haul the water back and forth and test the tank one time for the whole damn year. Yeah. If you go to Sweet Home, you got to go through that process all over again mm -hmm. just to haul one load of water. Yeah. Or 10 loads or whatever. And then if you come back to Lebanon, then you have to purge the tank again with Lebanon's water. Yeah. Okay. So well, I'm just, just okay. curious about it. Yeah. The not, city not of Lebanon anything. charges this. Very, very minimal for yeah. what that water costs. I am very uh, gratefully surprised. Yeah. <laughs> they've, so, been, they've been really in it for the city. Yeah, the they've been, been very, very helpful. Yeah. <laughs> so, to summarize now, three changes they're going to make change wells to storage facilities. Uh, starts uh, the the working time starts when they come to the city of Lebanon Hydro to move, and then we're going to take a price range out. Are there any uh, amendments we would like to make to this RFP? <laughs> Um, Do you think you can get this mail? We're moving the price point? range out. I okay. will not mail. I, my plan is to make phone calls to the very limited number of audible trucks in the area and also to post it. Okay. That's something you're going to do within the next week or so, yeah. right? Because okay, if we do hit that dry season, as you know, it's hard to get yeah, them anyway. As soon as I so. have a direction to go, I will go. <laughs> okay. I would prefer just to call and post it down at the board. You're okay. going, yeah. And that that will meet state guidelines for this. I will. Work. It will meet our procurement policy. Yeah. We, by having our own, we necessarily uh, reject the attorney general's model rules. So we're just going to say this works. Okay. And also, we're That's never the new appointee. Yeah, you make the rules. <laughs> I'm the I can't say that. We're going to fix it. Yeah. yeah let's see. Cool. Let's find this quote for you. Okay. I um, agree with what you're trying to change. Purchasing yeah. agent powers and duties. Establish and amend rules and regulations and procedures deemed reasonably necessary. So, means I can just. That's reasonable. I can change the rules willy nilly. Okay. Next. And then, uh, it'll be on. At an on call basis, then. The city needs water to all of Yeah, and, and from what we needed last year was the trucks one, two days a week. So I'll just throw that out as what we used last year. Kind of a proposal. Yeah. Based on two days a week, I guess. But you're going by hours. Right. So. What about truck size since that bid is in the butt last year? Um. We need water, whatever truck we can get. Whoever is the what bit us in the butt last year was lack of commitment. Mm -hmm. um, we couldn't get anybody to commit to us because the fires were happening. They get paid way more to go sit at a fire camp. It's a lot less wear and tear on their trucks <clears throat> um, to just sit there and nurse the camps, the cook at the camp sites. Um, the other guy. He decided hauling wine was way more profitable than hauling water for us. So there's a lot of variables. And then, two, do they want to commit to one to two days a week from us when they have their normal clientele that are scheduled throughout that period to not be able to serve them while they're serving us? So there's a lot of different variables. But, but we need point. to find somebody that's willing to commit to at least two days a week, basically. But to Dina's point, you know, I kind of agree with that. You want to know how much they're going to haul per trip, right? So that would be part of the well, request on the proposal. If they're hauling for, say, eight hours, mm -hmm. it, the truck size is really not that big of a deal because they're going to be spending the time loading the truck and unloading the truck. The um, You don't... We would prefer not to have the 1,600 gallons. I'm not even calling that. Um, most of your water trucks, if it's a trailer, they're around 4,000 to 5,000 gallons. Right. If it is a truck with a tank on it, um, those are run between 36 and 5,000 gallons. Yeah, that's all that's pretty yeah. reasonable anyway. Yeah. So. Okay. I think what she's after there is last year we got stuck with trucks 
that were 1,600 gallons. So if you had one 1,600 gallon truck and you hauled two days a week, it's probably not enough. No, that would not be enough. That would so, have to be four days a so week. So what you're asking for is possibly a minimum of a 3,000 gallon tank. Yeah. yeah. Maybe we should put that on. Yeah. There. That would, yeah. You know, the bid to be a potable water unit Definitely with a minimum of potable water. That was a minimum with a minimum of 3,000 gallons. Mm -hmm. They're just going to rule out the two little ant farm right. trucks that you had last year. <laughs> yeah. Thomas, I think that'd be good. And potable is a word that's got to be in there. <coughs> yeah, it's got to be in there. So. We had a company from Salem meet me in Lebanon to bring us water, and their truck was not potable. So that's I had to good. send them back home. Oh, yeah, you got to make sure that they can't contaminate what they're going to bring, that's for sure. How much is a potable truck? Potable trailer. I would go and even go there. Yeah. Uh, we already tried. See me after the meeting. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> what, 100 grand? 150? Not for a trailer. More than that? No. No. You can get trailers pretty reasonable. Well, if you're spending $90,000 a year on water. Well, we don't. Last year was maybe what we should an do albatross. Is just take that seventy-six thousand dollars and have the city purchase the trailer. Well, well, that's yeah, yeah. But, um, it's a, it's all or not. Yeah, yeah. I'll shut my mouth. No, no, yeah. no. You're yeah, serious. Yeah, but I mean, you know, kind of though too. It gets us through the next two years. But if we plan that route from Lebanon out here, yeah, yeah. yeah. you can only sell a trailer once you get down. True. Yeah, they say you can only sell it. You still have to have someone to run it. Though. But we still yeah. have to have a tractor. But it's gonna when they start doing that pipeline, it's gonna take two to four years for them to get yeah. that pipeline out here. Yeah, it's not gonna happen overnight. So we still happens. need to for, yeah, two to four years we still have to get truck water in here. <clears throat> but we still got one more thing to cover, right? Yeah. yeah. As far as the water proposal. No, on on to the next and last item. Do we need to approve this with the amendments? Yeah, so there needs to be a motion to approve uh, the amendment. Can you submit that to us? After it's redone, yes, yeah, I will make sure everybody has a copy of it so you see. Can I get one? Get there. Well? Yeah, I will work with you to make sure that the language is worth smith a little bit better. Uh, and I will send it to the council once uh, it is uh, approved and finalized. So the uh, the suggested motion now would be I move to approve RFP 2020 one as amended. So make this, does someone want to make that motion? I'll make the motion to. Approve 22-01 as amended. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. I have to abstain. Huh? I have to abstain. Yeah. Okay. And all opposed? We've got one abstention. Okay. Motion carries. I think it's important that the wording is correct on that thing. Yes. I agree. It's a couple of two battle words. Okay. Thank you all. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Thank you. you know, we Pretty still have an open spot on that budget committee, and you've got a lot of a lot of resources. We'd love to have you on it. So. I thank you very much for the honor of the suggestion. But again, I've played that song too many times. <laughs> it was nice seeing you. Thank you. Good, good seeing you all. Bye. I'm glad you're still in good health. Me too. <clears throat> Mm -hmm. and I RV. RV ordinance enforcement. So, <coughs> the last couple meetings, there was some public comment asking about uh, prioritizing the enforcement of RV uh, dwelling ordinances. I did receive four formal complaints uh, this month about uh, potential violations of city RV ordinances. Uh, so, I want to say uh, there were four complaints received. One was about somebody living in an RV uh, temporarily while a home is constructed on their property, and then there were three medical hardship. Uh, permits. So uh, one of them was a person who uh, voluntarily said we were going to uh, have that uh, voluntary, that, uh, that hardship dwelling vacated by the end of April. So that one was dealt with. Um, there were two more. Um, so one property owner was given that and then Mayor Perry took uh, some forms, I believe, to somebody else's property on Pine Street. Yeah. Right. So, uh, did you end up? Talking um, to I talked to them before the meeting. They didn't want to come to me tonight. They've got the paperwork filled out. They'll okay. probably bring it down, down tomorrow and deliver it to you. Perfect. And the one on my the one on my parcel property, he is in the hospital and he right now with kidney failure. He's not even sure if he's got to come out of that alive. But he 
he's got paperwork to, to fill out, and he needs me to help him fill it out, finish filling it out, and we'll get it to you. Perfect. And I see the people across the road here are making leaps and bounds. Yes. Yeah. So, but I heard also that their house has been postponed for a September delivery. Yeah. <laughs> it's unreal. So Isn't that crazy? I did want to discuss kind of the status of our uh, ordinances about living in an RV. Uh, so first off, uh, I've gone back and looked through our ordinances and I've discovered what it looks like in the last 15 years our city zoning ordinances were uh, um, overhauled twice, first in 2008 and then in 2012. In August 2012 is when our current zoning ordinance was passed, uh, and that abolished the 2008 ordinances. The problem was that in November 2012, it appears the council passed the current RV dwelling ordinance as an amendment to the 2008 one. So it's currently titled as a, a subsection of Chapter 4. Well, our current zoning ordinance has only three chapters, so it can't be an amendment to Chapter 4. And it also references uh, uh, sections in chapter 8 which again it only goes up to 3 so our current city zoning ordinance is kind of out of or our, our current RV ordinance is out of whack because it's in a chapter that doesn't exist and references chapters that also don't exist uh, maybe so, missing those yeah <laughs> maybe overlooking them <laughs> yeah <laughs> maybe something no, so okay. in, a, in a nutshell what you're saying is we don't have a zoning ordinance for RVs correct yeah, it's kind of wibbly wobbly. I mean, the the idea is that we passed an amendment to an ordinance that didn't exist anymore, uh, but we could look at it as a an addition to a chapter that doesn't exist right now. So it it is the sum of chapter four, but Does really it, it was it was put together as an amendment to the two thousand eight one. So anything for intention, like our intention was to amend this one, even though our intentions were maybe good, but we didn't have anything to amend. Yeah, there's nothing there. If there's no chapters, there is no ordinance. Yeah. Well, and that's kind of what it appears like right now. So what I would like the, the council to do is initiate an ordinance. So under the, the zoning ordinance, it says that um, the, the zoning ordinance amendments can be uh, requested by um, uh, Soderville residents or they can be initiated by the city council. So in order to keep that, to better integrate the RV ordinance into our current zoning and development ordinance, the council is going to have to vote on initiating that ordinance. Then the next city council meeting, I would bring a, a, uh, a new amendment to the zoning ordinance that actually integrates it correctly and uh, has, puts it in a current chapter and also removes the references to chapter 8, because again, chapter 8 isn't there. doesn't exist. <laughs> yeah. Yep. So uh, the other things we wanted to consider were uh, some changes to allow additional extensions beyond the current two-year system to reflect um, problems resulting from a declared uh, emergency, um, like COVID-19 is the big one right now that's on everybody's minds that caused labor shortages and that labor shortages caused uh, supply chain disruptions and the property across the street down there is having to deal with supply chain disruptions because of COVID-19, which means they're not going to get their house built uh, in a timely manner. So we wanted to uh, look at potentially amending that uh, because of uh, the problems that we're seeing right now. It could be there's something else in the future that causes something like that. Uh, and then Councilor Lewis had a suggestion to also look at um, allowing people to live on RVs on properties in the city due to economic hardships. Um, so what I was going to have the council to uh, have the council do tonight is vote on initiating an amendment uh, to the Zoning and Development Ordinance to correctly integrate Section 4.032, which is the RV1, um, and then amend 4.032 to permit additional six months extensions due to emergency declarations or economic hardship based on feedback we've heard. So I wrote up something that's it's kind of my idea of uh, not printed out of what I would like to see in Soderville just because Passing down. Yeah. Thank you. You know, if I have, there's other copies here. Yeah, you guys want <laughs> I think on my property, I should be able to let somebody stay on there. You know, if my son lost his job and he needed to stay in that one, if he needed to stay in an RV on my property, I think he should be able to. You know, but yet you don't want somebody cluttering up the town with our meat. Right. So this is just my opinion. Wait 
to a public comment to say something. But, well, I think in what you're trying to put, that there needs to be for a medical hardship. Right? Well, we do currently have a medical hardship. Um, ordinance and that one is correctly integrated into the city zoning and development ordinance. I think this is kind of sort of what we do anyways, isn't it? Well, I mean we extend it for two years and then six months after but they're paying six months permits, right? Yeah, ultimately we can only do that for a two-year period. Mm -hmm. So the idea is that the council would initiate an amendment allowing additional extensions beyond that two year if it's tied to a, a declared emergency. Um, well, and what you mean by declared emergency? Code is supposed to be over, but we are still suffering. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The problems that it caused. Terrible. And we're still suffering from the people who got driven out of their homes yeah. at Detroit Lake. I know. I, yeah, I have like seven friends who their homes were burnt, and. They haven't been able, they're still living in RVs in people's backyards. Yeah. Okay. So I actually did draft up some potential language, and that, that better clarifies what I'm talking about. I think you'll, uh, you'll like that, hopefully. So the idea, the, the amendment that I had proposed first off will say, the City Council may consider additional six months extension requests if completion of the construction of a dwelling uh, is prevented due to a natural disaster or other incident that results in a national, state, or local declaration of emergency that is ongoing upon submittal of the extension request or occurred within the previous 12 months to the submittal of the extension request. So, like, COVID is technically over. The emergency declarations are over, but it has been recent. So the idea would be that it could be something that is... It, it has to be because of something that had an emergency declaration, but it doesn't necessarily have to have uh, that declaration still be in place. Right. But the declaration still is in place, according to Biden. Some of them are, some of them aren't. The, the number of emergency declarations has changed um, throughout the, the country, so the idea is to say that it has to be tied to a declared emergency, but that emergency doesn't have to still be in effect. Because right? the sequelae can go on for a while. Yeah, because somebody could yeah. just say, well, I had an emergency. Well, so. the, the thing that I'm saying is, even though it's over and done with, Mm -hmm. It could take us as much as two to three years for our economy and our supply chain to come back up online. It is, it's way out of whack. Watch the news, watch news last, watch news last night, they still got stacks and stacks and stacks of containers on, yeah. on, on storage in the units. They ain't got trucks to get them across the country, get them to where they want to deliver them. <clears throat> containers for us. So oh, do, oh, sorry. Go so ahead. do we have a limit of how many... I mean, because we have like ADUs, how many you can have per square footage or per land. Do we have a limits of RVs that people can have on their property to help people? And I'm, I, I'm, I want to be kind, but yeah, I want to yeah. be fair, consistent, and standard. I don't know if there's one for RVs right now. We don't have one for economic hardship. So if we wanted to have one for economic hardship, we could say how many RVs we wanted to allow. Do you have a uh, suggestion, anybody? You mean in the entire city or on your property? On your property. property. One single property. Yeah. But this isn't an infinite design, right? This is extending it if we need to extend it, right? So it's, I mean, or hardship. Emergency or hardship, we can extend it if we need to, or if they need to for whatever reason, but it's not giving them an infinite right to squat on her with a You still need to bring that before the council on your case. Yeah, I mean, it sounds... Sadly, there are people, I don't know, in our city that we take advantage, so I would want to make sure that we're... Yep. And it's not like somebody opens up Weeby RV Park and they're selling exactly. RV Exactly. We don't want to be a KOA. <laughs> yeah. So what, what it currently says in there is that the City Council may consider a request for an extension of the time period for an, an additional period. And this amendment I would be proposing uh, is tied into that. The City Council would still have to do that. Somebody yeah. says, you know, some water emergency somewhere else caused this. We could go, yeah, probably a water emergency in Iowa is not causing you problems. Yeah, but a uh, fire in Detroit, Oregon could. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. And that's why they would have to come to the city council and identify yeah. which emergency declaration. You know, and the thing of it is, is, you know, oh, even at the discretion of the council, why should there be a time limit? Um, you know? So, in other words, okay. if you give them the first 
time limit of six months, and then it has to be reviewed, then bring it back to the council at a six month period. And, you know, okay, so how's things going? Do we need to extend this, or do you need to move on down the road, or whatever? Yeah. It should be at the discretion of the council. Yeah. So right now there are six month extensions, so that would just be the same rule. It would still be every six months. It'd be just six month increments. Yes. 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 <clears throat> so that, no, that wouldn't change. <clears throat> and then no. Uh, completed time period. So in other words, if somebody needed to live at your place for two years at six month in intervals. Yeah. Because yep. right. that's the way the economy is right now. There's people that have lost their jobs and can't. Lost their the jobs, house, and they have own, and they have oh, got yeah. the money to do anything but. Yep. <laughs> I think it's just plain and simple at the discretion of the council. So. Okay. Look at the parking lot. That's kind of what you're saying here, right, Alex? Yeah. In this proposal, I mean, it's what it sounds like to me whenever you read through it. it you know, it, right now the current is like two years maximum, right? Yeah. But no cap. Yeah. It's it's in yeah, six so, month increments. So that. Well, what yeah, he's proposing right. in this is to allow council to extend it for a hardship or for uh, disaster. Um, yeah. A, 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 a disaster incident that had a federal, state, or local emergency declaration. Yeah, so, I mean, I think that's exactly what we're all talking about and what we want, want to do, right? Okay, but bringing back to kind of what you threw out here, if, if I can, if I'm reading it right. So, economic hardship, like for your son. Right. Okay, lost his job, no place to live, lost his house. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we could have an income standard. Um, that would be something that's measurable. I know other, um, like for utility assistance, for example, you have to present um, an income, a proof of uh, income, that kind of thing to grant it. So that's, that's something we could have people be required to submit to us. We could keep that private, but and the councils would be able to see that. At but we the would, discretion of the council. At the discretion of the council. So, uh, so what if when I wanted to retire, that I rented out my house and started traveling in my RV and wanted to come back in the summers and spend three months in the summer living on my property in my RV. I'd be parking in your RV. I think that'd probably be fine. Uh, yeah. That's just like see, yeah, it's, in your RV. You're in still the, the owner of the property. Yeah. In the past, yeah. that wasn't allowed. Well, you know, when you're I, the owner, you can live in your RV on your own property. If you don't want to stay in your house, that's... I mean, if you'd prefer staying in the RV rather than yeah. your house, then See, when I first bought owner. my property, I had to get a permit to stay there for six months while my house was being built. Yeah. And when the house was delivered and set up and everything, then I was to stop using my RV on my property. Mm -hmm. I couldn't keep living in it according to... The, the previous yeah. <coughs> administration. Yes. The previous oh, administration. That makes any sense. Yeah. Uh, and there's a lot of things on that. On that but I've got comments about, but I would keep it quiet for now. I've not spoken before. Well, I think part of the deal with uh, having ordinances about living in RVs at all is it has to do with uh, property values around us. Exactly. You don't exactly. want to devalue your neighbor. Yeah you, do, yeah, you don't want to devalue your neighbor. You don't want to devalue yourself. So that would, city. that would be the idea behind it. But if you're renting out your house and you just live on your RV there for you know a few months out of the year, I don't think that's going to result in the county assessor devaluing your property. As long as nobody complains. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Like, what's the county assessor going to do? You need to put in there something to do with... Uh, I think there was something about can't be like disgusting. Keep so in other clean. words, if you drive up to, oh, they're gone now, but if you went up past River Bend and you went around the corner, what nobody wanted anymore, they just parked them alongside the road there. So, Or if you run around town, you see them, well, they'll be in the Bymark parking lot tonight, and then they'll be on the ground. So, you know, you have to so have a flat tire, tire for a day or two. You have to sit across from the restaurant right there at Grand Street been sitting there for three weeks straight. Uh, more than that. Hood, hood open on it, jack, jacked up, and jumped on the other side of it. Yes, but yeah. Well, Tim's run a few off from down below. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Whole caravan, he was going home one day at Whole Caravan. Three vehicles come down here and parked the park, and Tim and Gary Evans said, 
you guys get your asses back out of our city. You, you don't live here. <laughs> I think I was up in the mountains when I saw those. That's the, the gypsies those moving in. Up there, yeah. the yeah. They chased them right back, back out of the city before dark. <laughs> yeah. Well, what I'm saying is we don't want somebody to haul some junker down here. Right. It's all at the discretion of yep. the city council. Yeah, yep. yeah it, whatever we can do to maximize the flexibility of the council to yes. approve yes. or the discretion yeah. of the city council. So, I, say, I think it's all covered in here. Yeah, what we can do tonight is um, there's a suggested motion for how we want to amend this. I will make sure to write amendments next time around that reflect the discussion we had tonight. Um, if, the, if the council, of course, votes to initiate these amendments. Good. I think it's good. I think it's a good step forward. Are you so do you need this motion? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there will be a, a motion. I know the way it's been done in the past, especially under the, the 2008 initiative said uh, either the city or an, a resident can motion this. So the application had to say the city of Sodaville applies to change its own ordinance. Right. So the council is here to vote on initiating an amendment change that will be brought to the next uh, city council meeting. I'll make that motion. <clears throat> Any guys second on that one? Second it. I'm in favor. Aye. Aye. Opposed. Motion carries. Okay, that's everything we got to do tonight. Uh, I mean, there's still uh, the other like public comment bits at the end. Um, if you want. So, okay. Public comment. <clears throat> Are you ready for that? Yeah, let's do it. Okay, I have a question. Yeah. Uh, this goes back to your number. Let me find it. I think it's number eight. Um, city recorder's report. Yes. The very last paragraph. <coughs> water bill payment option. Yes. Not talking about PayPal, but you said something. CSC. Yes, yeah, CSC. Um, and so my question with that is, if people have leaks. And I know that the council makes a vote on how much they should pay for the leak and then make monthly payments above and beyond their normal monthly payment of, say, $45 if they're not using 2500 a gallon. So would that CSC, would that cover things like that to pay for? Could that help? Exactly. Instead, because okay, like when I had my leak, I had I had to pay like what was it, five hundred and seventeen dollars, and so I did that over three payments. So does this cover stuff like that? And I know the reason why I'm asking is because the sixty thousand gallon leak and the two twenty thousand gallon leaks. That's why I bring it up. Exactly. Because you can't help but to feel sorry for those people. Yeah. You would have you know, to apply to them. Yeah, the resident has to apply. Oh, yeah. I realize. Oh, it's up to the CSC oh, okay. if they would say yeah right. or nay. That's I think I, I, I get what we're saying here. What I will do is reach out to CSC and ask uh, more questions about kind of abnormally high water bills due to leaks. Does that have an effect on um, whether or not they're going to help? I know your your eligibility is based on your income, income, but are they going to see somebody who has a lot of money with a water bill that's very high because there was a leak? Are they going to help them out? And that's something we will reach out to them and ask and put in a staff report for the next council meeting. Okay, and I have another comment. I just have a comment, and I don't know if I should say this, but I think the council should have done it. Free speech. Because I was appro approached with it that I believe, me personally, I believe that the reason why it was brought up about the RVs is that it was a personal vendetta, and I did not want to be involved in it, and so I totally backed away from it and we that's why we asked our person to leave so because so, you know and um, and after the council meeting I'm going to share something with you guys but I don't want to say it on I can say that on the record I'm opposed to weaponizing city ordinances for uh, yes. personal vendettas so uh, if you believe that uh, there is a personal threat to you, and that is the oh. reason why, okay. No. If if that ever happens, I think that's not something I want to want to have here. So well, now this person is not speaking to me no. anymore. No. Well, 
If uh, if you want to have a medical hardship dwelling, it's your right under city ordinances. I realize so. that, but we've already asked him to leave. Okay. Well, it's all up to you. It's because your property. It's, it's now that he was supposed to be helping Rich with things, and he's got a girlfriend now, and he's never there. So it becomes a place to store his stuff, yeah. and we don't like that. Rich wants his wood cut and space back. <clears throat> Okay. Any more comments or questions? No, I just hope Tim yeah. gets better. Yeah. I'll Me too. Sure for him. Okay. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Yeah, the council meeting? reports is the next one. Oh, council reports. Okay. Do we have any council reports? Okay. Well, Everybody yeah. is going to fill out their on call yes, thing. Yes, we're going to get the little on call thing. Start signing up. Get your five little things of list that you need to send to Alex about your suggestions. Yep. 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 Okay. We have a motion to adjourn. Make the motion to adjourn. Second. Not in favor. All in favor. Aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carries. <sighs> okay. Okay. Yeah. I will try to make the next one shorter. Holy crap! I think this one was <laughs> This one wasn't normally long. Oh yeah. Good job on reading everything there, Ryan.